Hello. Thank you for joining us for the uh, Sunday service for Vine Valley United Methodist Church. Um, this is the online service for November 15, 2020. Our centering words and call to worship. Use the talents you possess. For how silent would the forest be if the only birds that sang were those who sang the best? God calls us to use our gifts for the building of God's kingdom. But we're afraid. Christ urges us to find our courage and to not look back. But our gifts seem so small or insignificant. You see, the Spirit offers us everything we need. But what if we fail? Trust the gifts that you have been given. This morning we will celebrate our gifts as we worship God this day. Amen. We invite you, uh, if you have any joys or concerns that uh, you would like us to pray or be in prayer with you or to celebrate with you, to email them into bindvalleyumc at gmail.com. Um, it will be our honor and our privilege to uh, be in prayer with you for whatever it is that you might need. So, um, as a church, you know, we're grateful to be able to um, offer our services online as well as in person uh, in this time of COVID. That is a blessing to us and hopefully to you uh, who, um, for whatever reason, are watching us online. Uh, perhaps you're more comfortable socially distanced uh, from home. Uh, perhaps you can't get out uh, for whatever reason. So we're just glad that you could join us. Um, our concerns as a church are, you know, naturally for COVID, those who are battling uh, the disease, their families that cannot go and visit with them, uh, as well as uh, we have uh, president-elect and we have um, our leaders of our towns and our counties. Uh, we just hold them up in prayer as we go through this time of transition. Uh, doesn't matter who you voted for. Um, you know, now is the time. It's a time for change. You know, we're coming up on Advent, and Advent is all about change. It's all about a, a turning. So, you know, um, we just pray for our leaders and that we can maybe hopefully come together, you know, with the peace of Christ uh, to lead us. So if you would, uh, at home, just join me in the Lord's Prayer the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Our scriptures this morning, uh, we're going to start in Judges, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And uh, the name of this uh, section is, Deborah Becomes Israel's Judge. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord turned them over to the king of Javan, of Hazar, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth Hagoyim. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to, Lord, to the Lord for help. Deborah, the wife of Lapidah, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah. 
between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out ten thousand warriors from the tribes of Nephtal and Zebulun at Mount Tabor. And I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River. And there I will give you victory over him. There I will give you victory over him. Our psalm is Psalm 123. And uh, this morning's uh, version is going to come from the message. I look to you, heaven-dwelling God. Look up to you for help. Like servants alert to their master's commands, like a maiden attending to her lady. We're watching and waiting, holding our breath, awaiting your word of mercy. Mercy, God, mercy. We've been kicked around long enough kicked in the teeth by complacent rich men, kicked when we were down by arrogant brutes. And our New Testament reading comes from 1 Thessalonians, and it's chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, Dear brothers and sisters, we really don't need to write you. For you know quite well that the day the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying, everything is peaceful and secure, that disaster will fall on them, as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night, so be on your guard. Not asleep like the others, stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other, and build each other up, just as you are already doing. And our gospel reading comes from Matthew 25, and it's verses 14 to 30. This is the parable of the bags of gold. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one with two bags gained two more bags. But the man who had received one bag went off, 
dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought to the man another five bags. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained you five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained you two more. His master replied to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here I give back what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have at least put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned I would have received at least back the interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has... For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These are the words of God for the people of God, and they are to be trusted. So here we start in Judges. Israel has again fallen into sin in God's sight. When we sin, it is against another person. But it's also against God. Because we're not following the commands that are given to us. And we, in this passage, we find that this is the only time the Israelites' enemies were coming to them from their own land instead of a foreign land. So here they are under the pressure of the Canaanites. God had previously told them to drive out the Canaanites and had provided them the ability to do so, but they had failed to do it. And so the Canaanites were regrouping and getting ready once again to do battle. Now the leader of the Canaanites was Sisera, who had 900 chariots. And basically, a chariot in those days was like a tank of today. And so for 20 years, 20 years, the Israelites have been ruthlessly oppressed. And they finally came to their senses, so we'll call it. And they went to the, the judge and the prophet, Deborah, and said, we need to cry out to God. We need, we need some help. We need some answers. Now, Deborah was sitting as the judge of the time. 
and it's for the Israelites and for us also here in this in this scripture to realize that God is always ready to come to our aid. God is always ready to come to our rescue. God is always waiting for us to ask. See, it's part of the whole being in a relationship with God. It's a two-way street. Well, anyway, this time the message was passed along by way of the prophet named Deborah. And I was a little taken aback the first time I ever read this scripture because um, to think that here we are in 2020 and there are still places in the world, there are still congregations um, around the globe who don't think women should be in the pulpit and they shouldn't be in ministry. And here this is so many thousands of years ago. And not only was she a prophet, but she was sitting as a judge. She would settle the disputes and the differences between people. Never mind giving out orders from God about conquering your enemies. But the Bible is full of examples of women who have held national leadership roles. And in this instance, God chose Deborah to lead the Israelites. We have to be careful, on a little side note here, to never let our personal prejudices get in the way of doing God's work or following God's commands. Now, Deborah had called for Barak, who was the leader of the Israelites. And she told him, listen, this is what God has told me to tell you. This is what you need to do, and God will provide victory for you. And if you listen to what Barak says, and I'm going to paraphrase here. Wait a minute. You, a woman, is telling me that God wants me to go up against these guys with all these chariots? Well, if you're so important to God, then I want you to come and stand next to me in the battle. Because if nothing is going to happen to you, if I'm standing right next to you, then nothing will happen to me and I'll be safe. You see, Barak was putting more faith into human strength than he was in God's word, in God's command. Do we ever do that? Do we say, well, when God tells me directly and not through some other person, maybe I'll believe it. Have ears to hear. We have to have trust in God's commands, in God's word. Whether it is the written word that comes to us through scripture, whether it's the message that we hear on a Sunday morning by a pastor or by whoever's giving you know, the message. Um, we have to close out the world and let in God. We have to let in the Holy Spirit. We have to let in the words to wash over us and just absorb what it is that the Spirit is trying to teach us. Now we're going to turn to Psalm 123. And this was a very short psalm this morning. Um, as I mentioned, I, I read it from the message. And uh, just in case you're wondering, the author of Psalm 123 was thought to be Hezekiah, but we're not quite sure, and there was no confirmation. Um, but here it's describing looking to God in heaven for his mercy and his grace. And the longer the people waited, the more they cried out, Where are you, God? God, where are you? We need you. We need your grace. We need your mercy. Because they were being suppressed. They were being oppressed by the evil and the proud 
who offered to them no help, those in power and in uh, positions of authority. They showed those in power and um, authority nothing but contempt for God. Now, last week in 1 Thessalonians, we, we discussed the question Paul answered in regards to the salvation of the already departed once Jesus was to return. And we touch, began to touch base on the fact that nobody knows when that's going to happen. But this is a continuation of the fact or of that conversation. Christ will come ex unexpectedly as it states like a thief in the darkness of the night. But we are, chil we are children of the light and of the day. It's probably a really good thing we don't know when this is going to occur. Can you imagine a conversation between, let's say, a husband and a wife? And the wife says to the husband, Hey, did you repent of, your, repent of your sins yet and start your daily prayer time like you said you were going to? You know, Jesus is coming back very soon. The husband turns, tells his wife, Listen, would you get off my back? Jesus isn't coming for another three months. I've got plenty of time. Well, two months and three weeks later, Hey, mister, I've got plenty of time. Guess who's coming to dinner next week? Hoof! <laughs> you get my point? We need to constantly be ready for Christ's return. We need to be prepared spiritually. We need to know we have gotten ourselves into a position to listen to God's commands. To listen to his teachings. To listen to his word. Because if today was the day, what would Jesus find us doing? What would Jesus find you doing? How would he find you living? Or can you imagine this? Well, I know I have three months, so I don't... Can, do what I want for two months and three weeks, and then I can ask for forgiveness, right? No. You see, as Christians, we have work to do here. And we will be judged on how we responded to God's calling on our lives and how we responded to what God enabled us to do, what he gifted us to do. And besides... That's trying or testing God, and God is not to look favorable upon that whatsoever. Um, now, when he returns, we know God will intervene directly and dramatically with world affairs. Just as it has been predicted over and over again in the Old Testament. The day of return will bring punishment and blessing because Christ is coming to judge sin and to set up his eternal kingdom. We need to continue to do God's work until the day of the Almighty's return. We need to wear the armor of God for we are not merely battling mankind but evil from its very source. We need to put on the armor of God, and that is the shoes of peace that comes from God's word, the belt of truth, the body armor of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. As we fight the good fight for God's sake, we may be tired and weary, but we will be victorious. Just like someone who runs a marathon. They train and they train and they train. And on race day, by the end of 26 miles, they're tired. They're weary. 
but they keep their eyes on the finish line. And they're cheered on by the people all along the way. See, that's what we do as Christians. We hold each other up. We support one another along the way, whether we're in the battle, the battle of sin or oppression, of violence or of hatred. Or when we're being cast out of something or somewhere or spoken, someone's talking about us because we take a stand based upon our faith in Christ. All those things don't matter because in the end we will be victorious. Keep up the good fight. Keep your eye on the finish line. Because time is going faster and faster. And we are one day closer to Christ's return. And it could be today. Are you ready? What will God find you doing if he were to come back right now? Now, last week I spoke about the ten bridesmaids and how they were not prepared for the coming of the bridegroom, Jesus. This week, Jesus teaches us in a parable about being good stewards with what we have been given or with what God has called us to do. The parable tells us each man was given an amount of gold in accordance to their abilities. No one received more or less than they could handle. The bags of gold represent our gifts from God, the things he had gifted to us and wants us to see what we will do with them. See, God gives us spiritual gifts as well as gifts of time and of other resources. That he looks to see how we use those gifts and according to our abilities and how we will invest them until his return. It's not how much we know or how much we have, but how well do we use what we know and what we have in accordance with our abilities. All of us have been entrusted with different abilities. Some people have the gift of administration. Some people have a heart for social justice. Other people have gifted abilities to work with kids in schools or be bus drivers. Um, you know, other people have the gift of gab and, you know, they can just start talking to people and get them, you know, drawn in to a conversation. All of these are gifts. All of these are gifts that are received from God. But not each gift is for everybody. Now, I've been known to have the gift of gab and can start talking to folks. doesn't matter where it is, you know. Um, but there are certain gifts that are just not my forte. The important thing here I'd like you to remember is... What we are entrusted with in heaven will depend upon what we did with what we were entrusted with here on earth. What are you doing with what God has entrusted to you? In response to the word, we ask, what time is it? It's time to wake up. What time is it? It's time to get going. What time is it? It's time to live as children of the light. What time is it? It's time to trust God's love and answer Christ's call. So as you leave 
this service. Go out clothed in faith and showered in love as we go forth shining with God's light. We go washed in joy and bathed in hope. We go forth radiant with Christ's love. We go blessed with gifts far more precious than jewels. We go forth blazing with the fire of God's Spirit. Amen. And before we depart, I just want to um, say uh, the Friendship House is looking for helpers this Thursday, uh, at from beginning at two o'clock. Uh, they'll be filling those distribution Thanksgiving boxes with all the canned and boxed goods, um, and then we'll add in the tur the turkey on Saturday the twenty first. So if you are available uh, to go to the Friendship House uh, in Middlesex at 2 p.m. Uh, they would love to have whatever helpers they can get and just uh, get down and let them know that you're there to help and see where they put you. All right, uh, until next week, I wish you all God's blessings and grace and peace. Be well, be blessed, and be a blessing.